An old man wearing tracksuit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth, then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids to meet yours. Unclouded by cataracts, his eyesight is sharp. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes, helps me see all the shit. A shudder of disgust passes his right side. His left side remains motionless. The fuck? No fucking way. Not on Kuno's life. Officer Kuno's got his keel A9 pointed at your fucking head, and he is gonna blow it clean off if you don't drop your weapon right now! Even with the intensity he's putting in those words and the fidgeting in his pocket, the kid is unconvincing. Disarmed by a kid? To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. Not in a million years does he believe Kuno is armed. Perhaps it's the best end he could hope for. It's out of bullets. Like an amputated limb in the sand. He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness, like a song. The future teaches you to be alone. The present. The present to be afraid. Cold. Real music. Real brilliant cult. That's La Revachelière, not your rock and roll misanthropy. Chanson de soldat of the black and whites. Marching song. Forget about that for a moment. You need to address that remark first. The job of a bougie dog. You don't understand anything. No reply. His leg twitches. Strangely, like a puppet on a string. There's something off. You feel it. This was the right question. You just... You went in too fast. Over eager. You need to... Contextualize it for him first. Turn the key elsewhere. The lock is here. It's here. He sounds like he hasn't gotten to speak to another human being in a long time. Especially about politics. That's what you should do first. My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross. Political Commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my terminal surrender. There, behind them, across the Delta, the Insacom Building, Coalition Government, Insulindian mission control. Wait, wait! Like the fucking ancient army? Yes. I am from the Insulindian citizens militia. Recruited from Jamrock in 07. Trained in the Ecole de Control, Ariane. Consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 43 years. No. I've been on other islands too. I was an resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was an E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was... 
22 years ago. No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not the army. Like you belong to the moralist party. 43 years and 10 months. It's too long. It's not how a human being should live. <clears throat> but I couldn't just forget what I saw. He just couldn't. He nods. But he can now. Hiding, fishing, waiting. Where the afternoon grows late, on Rue de saint Gislaine, people walk home. Street lights will soon be lit. Further inland, the streets are alive with workers, men, women, children, street hawks and migrant laborers. The temperature is steady. Alto cumulus clouds form above Precinct 41. Two police officers step out of the Whirling in Rags cafeteria. Satellite officer Jean Vicmer inspects a series of burnt black letters splashed across the plaza mosaic. Patrol officer Judith Minot points west. The fishing village. She glances at her watch. We meet in 15 minutes. It's a 10 minute walk. The officers go, leaving behind the writing, still smoldering. One day, it says, I will return to your side. Always waiting for her to return. Girl child revolution. They have you. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for a revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore, however hard I try, whatever I do. What has he done? Perhaps a confession would lighten the load. I just mourn. You're with the RCM, the coalition-appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. Rock and roll posturing. You're the RCM. You represent the Moralist International, the enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary, the Parti Communiste en Soulande. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <coughs> a spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. Rene, the royalist on the coast, said. Only the army. Liberal reactionaries signed it for them. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I am a political commissar of the Communist Party, and the party never surrendered. He just wipes the blood from his chin. You're insane. Radio shows, speed racing, sporting goods, none of it is real. There's nothing serious in this world. It's a farce. What have I used it for? I've used it for killing people. Here we go. A trail of blood. Even the kid can smell it. Killing people? Like straight off in them? It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. You mean like, lately? After the war? 
There is no after the war. Class war is never over. So he's continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay. Okay. This is it. You can feel it, like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while. But this is what you live for. This is the shit. The great serotonin jackpot. The solution. Go in straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. The who now? He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. Do it, sire. Oh, yes. That one. Ugly piece of work, that boy. Did you kill him? Fucking tell this cop. I am a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Revachol. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. A drop of blood in the saliva. Tear into him. Pile it on him. Everything you got on him, the more the better. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Wait, here it comes. The goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clasio's roof. There were Maybells in the grass when you got here, and Maybells on Clasio's balcony. And nowhere else. Nowhere in all of Martinez have you seen them. Nothing else comes up. You see the Kuno watch you try to stimulate the thought processes by hitting yourself. I'm sorry, this didn't do anything. Usually hurting yourself does. Yo, a word? Okay, so we've got the old fuck. Oh fuck, he's practically dying to big up how he did it. Just get him to cough it up. Kuno's got your back. Yeah, Kuno can see that. So can fucking murder Rooney here. You should stop. It's weird as fuck. Yes, Kuno can see that. You got this. Think of like, uh, what other shit he's done too. Kuno can tell he's a killer. Good. I think it's going really fucking well. Just cut it with the punch and shit, all right? Makes us look like we got nothing. You hear that? He thinks you're very close. Well, there's the gun. Why you still haven't picked it up and used it against him is beyond Kuno. Good. Talk to him. Demonstratively pick it up. Then push it along with other accusations. This is a good idea. Kuno's in the game. Let's fucking do this, pig. Minions of capital. What do you want? Is what you plan to say. Before you can get past your under, the kid interrupts you. You sure? You sure we got it all? Right. Give him his rights. The words come to you, clear as day. What? But you said I would be taken to the... the... The sum of all the erratic movements, fidgeting and mood swings he's been exhibiting. The wind picks up. The silence on the water is broken all around you. Little shivers of waves appear. I... Do you understand? No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He is a brave man. Why is he unraveling? He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. 
Pupils are dilated too. Eyes getting blacker and blacker. We don't need your permission. We do need to talk about that boat though. How are we gonna take him? Yeah, no. Only two are gonna fit in that fucker. I guess you could take him back, but... Wait, but then, who watches over him while you're coming back? Fuck! It's the three piggies in a boat problem. What is this farce? This is a fucking farce. I can't. Something is happening. Stop. Lillian, you could ask her. Watch this killer. This fucking world. This world. What is this? Below the confusion and rage. A fit of jamais vu, like yours. The thought passes. More pressing matters take its place. You fucking with me? Because I can, I can take him. This fucking world. What are you talking about? Is this... us? Cold. From the east. Your skin is crawling suddenly. Long and slender. Be very careful. The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. Take long, deep breaths. Slow down your pulse. Don't move yet. And when you do, be light as a feather. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The Insulindian Phasmid? Everybody does? It's the fucking Insulindian Phasmid? Yeah, I, I don't have a camera. That sucks about Kuno. Kuno can't believe how lame he is without the camera right now. Should have stolen one. A real cop would have one. Meanwhile, in the antechamber of the Station 57 Lazarus, a neatly packed pair of cargo pants and an orange bomber jacket sit in a locker. Nested on the jacket, a small block of milled aluminium tucked away in a leather case. The camera, an instant color camera, 
the lieutenant keeps tucked away in his coat pocket. A moan of discomfort sounds from the Lazarus as he turns onto his side. Back on an island, 28 kilometers away, the gigantic insect moves its antennae, taking its measure of the air, slowly. It's searching for something. You. Nothing changes in the cyclical brain motion of the creature's limbs. They are porcelain white on the inside and reed colored on the out. Beige, light brown and striped. You are unsure if it is scared or not. Its insect mind is impenetrable to your reasoning. You barely get to take one step. The invertebrate reacts with uncanny speed, skating away across the water. It's gone, like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but rings on the sea's calm mirror. It's blending into the tufts of reeds in the distance, moving from islet to islet. Fuck, where did it go? You never had a chance. There was something off the moment you approached it. The creature didn't like you. Your voice echoes alone on the water. The kid looks at you. 300 meters inland, special consultant Trent Heidelstam cups his ear. Satellite officer Vic Mayer nods to him on the jetty. I heard it. He must be really out of it, yelling like that. Well, at least he's alive. Officer Minnow, in the blue uniform, frowns. Jean, maybe something happened? He's in distress. Yo, we just saw a giant fucking insect, okay? Focus on that, not some... Where'd it go? It definitely had something to do with that. It was repelled by you, as if it was scared. The fuck? Ferone? Man, this ain't about no femone. This is about the phasmid. Did you see the size of that? We fucking saw it, yo! It was real! And you'll see it again. Now that you know it's real, how long can it hide? Damn. Kuno's read about that shit in a book. Kuno's booked that shit. That was like a secret animal. Like one of those they think is real, but haven't seen. The Insulindian Phasmid. Kuno doesn't know anything about it though, except you stink bad, which is why it left you. Yeah, yeah, right there. It doesn't like being out in the open, shifty fuck. It's gone now, but... Wow. Yeah, it walked on water. Like a water spider, or like one of those water walkers. This cop shit is insane. Everyone, yo! We gotta tell the world about this! Case solved! Insect found! We're fucking master detectives or some shit! We're good! He's truly satisfied with your performance in Death Island right now. What now? in some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect's not looking so good. We need to check on him. Also, man... It looks like the insect had some kind of nest there. Look, like a horde or some shit. In the reeds, where he's pointing, you see a flash of white. Porcelain white. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. See? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking. With fear and longing. Like an addict of some terrible substance. A light shiver passes him. 
followed by nothing. His hands are trembling and he breathes slowly. The boy waves his hand in front of the old man's face. The trembling mouth appears to sigh. There's no other response. Yes, this rides him. We gotta bring him to a doctor. Good news, this solves our boat and piggy's problem. He's not going anywhere. He's trapped here. He's old and fried. Kuno's seen this, like, after a massive bender. Kuno's dad. I mean, getting arrested as a fucking giant stick insect jumps up behind you. That shit would break any man, even a Kuno man. Yeah, old man, hang tight. Let's slowly start shuffling off Death Island, okay? We're about done here. Oh yeah, we did good shit here, detective. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Look what the tide brought him. What does that say on your back? Fuck the world? So you've turned into some kind of nihilistic rock and roll world ender? Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man with sunglasses from the whirling in rags. But where are his sunglasses? Harry, that's because you're a cop with fuck the world written on his back. Now that you start thinking about it, maybe they were afraid of you. No one has been afraid of you without you knowing. They all felt perfectly safe. Actually, are you? Are you still a cop? There's so much disco going on, it's hard to tell. Vic, calm down. We're all pigs here. Even though we're all pigs here, you and Kuno are more pigs than the rest of the pigs. He'll have your back, only later. That's right, and you look like you got 20 STDs. We're not forgetting about anything. Look at you. Hello, I'm Trent Heilerstein. I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicomar, and this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Special Consultant Trent Heilerstein, Battle Officer Judith Minot. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. The kid's about to say he's Kuno. Task Force! Cool! I'm the Kuno! We just came from the fucking island! Listen, Kuno. Harry and I are old friends, from way back. Mind letting us have a moment? Won't be long. I just need to talk to Harry about some of the things I think he's done wrong lately. Good luck with that. Sounds like you're in some shit. Harry, we want to help you. Trent, I believe this is where you come in? Um... I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit kid, what an interest in Monica. You, shit kid, that's you. Despite all that you've done, the deserter, the phasmid, the case? No. Because of all that you've done. The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. 
shit, kid. He didn't betray you. He just told us the direction you went in. Who's Sylvie? Super. Whore. Foreigners. Hatred. Um, and the uh, people on the street helped us too. You're a legend among the drunks, Harry. A legendary local drunk. Guilty as charged. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. I didn't lie to you. No one lies to you. You were so fucked up on booze you couldn't recognize your own partner. What am I? I was asked to share my take on some of the more fringe academic theories developed in Kirnstein in the 30s regarding partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He is smart. Let's move on. Duped. Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk and you won't be duped so easily. Fuck, pig. The name's Gorno, not Kuno. It's lamer. My name's lamer than I said it was. Just try not to shit yourself, please. Yeah, major crimes unit. Under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicomar. Ring any bells? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn major crimes unit. There's you, me, Jude, drunk fucking Heidelstown, and Guillaume Baby. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Oh, fuck you. You're part of this shit show. Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Tron because I'm forcing him to stay. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde and partial to sunglasses? See? There. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me, I'm Gbevy. It was going to be funny, but then you really did have brain damage. So not so much anymore. He sincerely thought it was going to be amusing. For both of you. Do. It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit here now, Harry. Because of you. They're your posse. Or what remains of it. Hand-picked. Hand-lost. God damn it, Harry. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. And you were probably right too. I would have never let you abduct a kid and take him on a creepy boat trip in the middle of fucking March. You talking about Kuno? Major Kuno wasn't abducted, you fucking fat dink. Fuck out of here. It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? Here we go. Alcoholic delirium. Visions. All must pay. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia. Episodic and semantic. Meaning? You forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, Pearl, and so on. As displayed in our interactions with him here, and also his interactions with the locals, where he did not remember being a law official. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry. What do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? 
And what is that? Pig's lying? He's clearly got something real fucked up going on up in here. You got that right, kid. He's a psychopath, and he made up this whole amnesia story to fuck with us. Detective Vigmer, he has blacked out before. We should take this seriously. Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case, the other when we looked into that mural. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. The two cases in your ledger. The unsolvable case and the next world mural. Those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here's my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Totally not. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. Okay, Trent, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. Leadership now. No, Harry. Fuck you. You already fucked us. I've already explained this shit to Price twice, to Berdyayeva four times. I'm your partner. I answer for you when you're not there. When you clocked out, I became responsible for your cases and your special task force. They can keep that pension. You're rock solid. You can put your clothes on hard. Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Yeah, yeah. Just stand there. It's cool. No, now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Lie. Just bide your time. Ask something. Then lie. Ha ha ha. Ho ho ho. Tequila sunset. Jump the canal. So funny, Harry. Thank you for fucking me. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of my pay slip. You know that, right? You're gonna get fired, and I'm gonna pay till I die. It doesn't matter. <sighs> your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. He doesn't have it. Here's an idea. Maybe you could look in the motherfucking motor carriage you drove into the sea. Maybe look there. Ah, oh, fuck it. I get it myself. Just tell me you have your gun. Yeah, gun. The thing that was given to you to kill people. Are you drunk right now? You're drunk right now, aren't you? You're a fucking bum. I can smell it. Wow, you're being brutalized? Pick on pick violence? Who are you posing for, Harry? You let the suspect escape, a certain ruby. You were too fucking high to take her in, weren't you? We've read the reports. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. We know. Oh, well. If it made you boo-boo. I'm not even gonna get into the 80 other suspects you failed to arrest. Or the fact that you're ever a Claire's little peony now. Doing I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the eight people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is barely clinging to life in the hospital. Harry, it was fucking mass murder. Yo, I'ma stop you right there, fuckface. It's Kuno time. That's it. The cavalry has arrived. 
No! You've explained enough, pig! Kuno takes care of this shit now! There is no challenge in the fury the kid is about to unleash. First of all, yo! Those guys were all <laughs> The guys in the armor! <laughs> the union guys! <laughs> so yeah, suck Kuno's dick! You don't know me! You don't know what happened here! You don't know this shit! Automatic fucking weapons! Urban battleground shit! Battle lines drawn in blood! Blood Meridian! You don't know this shit! Now, Kuno wasn't there! Right, you're getting this? Kuno was breaking up with Kuno's main bitch, see? Part of the way shit! But when Kuno got there, Pig had fucking cleaned up! Blood and ruin! Smoked all those dinky fuckers! Saved this shit! Martine shit! I see he's mourning and shit! His main pig got semi-wasted, sent to the boo-boo mobile. Kuno steps up. Kuno fucking fills those shoes. Big boy shoes. Detective Kuno. He comes to a sudden, abrupt stop. Are you done? Yo, Kuno feels like you weren't really listening to Kuno. You were hearing, but you weren't listening. <laughs> and the armor boys came to Martinez to fuck shit up. Hardy boys or whatever the fuck they are. They were telling everyone and their mum how they wasted one of those armor fucks. It was always gonna go down like that. My pig stepped up, got fucked in the leg for it. Sacrifice style. Not bad, Kuno. Could be a little shorter though. Yes, I understand. He was in the fight. Second, you dinky fucking asshole. This pig right here. This oink oink motherfucker solved that shit on Death Island. Case solved. Go home or fuck off. You no. Really, I don't think it's a good idea to let him speak. You may want to rethink your strategy of letting a 12-year-old present your case. Yeah, who knows been around, seen shit, real shit. He's not a fucking toddler. He appreciated you remembering. Yeah, some fucked up grandpa did it. Fucking grandpa in the woods or some shit. <laughs> Old shit. Kuno doesn't know about that. Look, the real shit here is... Yeah, yeah, straggler, sure. Are you getting this smart shit? The old fuck killed him. Confessed to it too. We got him snitching on himself. Popo style. A straggler. From the revolution. Yeah, fucko. He's on the island right now, in a coma or some shit. Oh, and we also got the gun. Gun of the killer shit. You know what I mean? Now, let's get our big boy shit on. He means murder weapon. Yeah, big shit. Now listen up, suit fuck. You're gonna shit yourself because it's gonna get wacko natural. Wacko natural? I think I know what it's going to be. There's a fucking four-ton mantis on the island! What? <clears throat> Sorry, kid. Me and Harry need to. His patience has all but run out. The boy better wrap it up. Yo! This is like the biggest moment in history right now. You wanna fucking listen to what's coming out of Kuno's mouth? We saw the giant insect White as fuck, literally the Insulindian phasmid or some shit, praying mantis style. It was three meters tall, and this pig right here. His hand is shaking with rage and excitement. This fucking old popo discovered it. Me and the pig bacon discovered a new species. It was beautiful. It was. You ain't seen this kind of animal before. Fucking miracle shit. He gulps, overcome with awe. This case, this fucking grandpa shit, this ugly shit, it's nothing. We saw a ghost, a real life ghost, like he fucking proved ghosts are real. It's that big popo, it's fucking. His eyes are welling up now. Why are you not fucking shitting yourselves? What's wrong? Did he just say Insulindian Phasmid? I don't know, eyes on doubt. Harry. Did you just pick up some myelin berm and pin it on him? You aren't fucking listening! 
The bomb is nothing. This is science history here. It was the insulindian phosmid. It's connected to the shit. Tell him. Lieutenant, please. You have to have more than just some mantis. The straggler, stick to that. You said you solved the murder. It's not going well. Present something now. Something sane and clear. Make your case. Something that proves you haven't lost your mind. No, there was a giant insect, and they have to understand that. You will find proof. Don't give up. What? It sounded like you set up a drug lab. I don't care what your drug lab is called. Ah, oh, fuck it. You're done as a cop. Become a Polonium dealer for all I care. Stop squealing on yourself. Kuno needs to get out of this shithole. Pig's talking whack to impress you. It didn't go down like that. He done good. Tell them. Yes, we can see the jacket. Fuck the world. Fuck police duty. Fuck jean Vicomar. that's what it says to me. Fuck me. We've been through this. Damn it, not that jacket. The one you got for the Doom Spiral. Forget it. It's not worth the effort. No. Sure you get the case together. You can do police work. In bounds. That's not a surprise to me. Even the insect. I don't care. But you're an alcoholic. And you've been drinking. Again. I won't let my life unravel because of this. He has. That's true. There's an enormous sadness in that admission. It's tough. One of the toughest addictions to overcome. Comparable only to heavy synthetic opiates. Even morphine is easier to kick than alcohol, statistically. The odds are against him, especially at his age. He's too old. He's been like this for too long. I've seen him try many times. It's a farce by now. They're leaving. They're all turning away from you. No, you can figure it out. Replace it. Replace the alcohol with amphetamine. Or GBL. Fuck it. Morphine. Graffito removal agent. Anything. It'll buy you time. All you need is time. No, you can stop. Just wade through the hell. Month after month. Year after year. You against the nothingness. It's possible, because time is possible. If you declare yourself a doomed man, a doomed man does not need comfort from anything. He can go on without drink or help, like a clockwork. For the world, for Revachon. Compared to the intersection in front of video Revachon 24, it's nothing. Compared to that, everything is possible. Think, you can detect in Jamrock, Boogie Street, Kuron, Leroyam, Underground, Coal City, on the 881. It will all be yours to sift through when the last snow has melted. Stop and you can go to the burnt out quarter and meet me there, wafting above the burnt ruins, like the smell of caramel. Lurateur is waiting. At Station 41, and the glow of its desk lamps, the clicking of coffee mugs, clouds of cigarette smoke, and the ringing telephone. Your youth, there is still a way back. The houses, the streets, the motorways singing. Hold on, this is a fight we can win. Listen to this shit, man! Detective, I just don't want this trial to go on any longer. It's cold outside, and let's just go. Fucking Harry, fuck you for bringing this kid with you. It's only because he's defending you. It's the only reason you're not staying here to die. It's more than that. He just can't. One final time. You manipulative son of a bitch. It is cold, and we have vehicles in the square. The perp needs to be taken into custody. Let's get a move on. Now, now you will finally get to know who you are. The man looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. 
fuck do you think? Gonna rock that law enforcement shit with you guys? Detective Kuno? Like you promised? Like you promised? No, he's not. He's 12. Kuno's fucking 19? You have to be 15 for the junior officer program. You're not even that. Hey, you don't get it? Kuno's got pig all over him. Kuno smells of bacon grease. Being seen with you, fucking informant shit. You think no one sees this? They're gonna hang me by the nuts if you leave me here. You want that on you, a dead kid? Or you want Kuno at your station, solving shit, like we just did? His hands are shaking and his face is white. He's genuinely scared of being left behind. It's not the locals he's worried about, but an 11-year-old girl. I know a hundred kids with nothing, Harry. We can't make them all cops. You don't have to make them cops. Only Kuno. Kuno's an asset. He can't be a cop, Harry. He's 12. And he says f every four seconds. I won't say it. I, I won't say it anymore. His teeth are clenched and his throat moves in a gulping motion. Maybe you can take the kid with you. Enroll him a year earlier and say he's 14. If he... I promise I won't say it. I, I won't say any of it anymore. Detective Kuno Dodoita. Oh, for God's sake. Yes, we'll do it. Another sigh of surrender. Good. Fuck it, let's go. Trump brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. Under the afternoon sky, the great district hums. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls, and chimney stacks. Fire traps as far as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41, to Boogie Street forking into the snow swept horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de saint jerome a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Vitmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scottlieb looks up from the list. I hear he's quite unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Ptolemy Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in his office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through, and when he does, he'll side with Revachon. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minna, of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? <laughs>